Hello everyone, this is Rashik Janjala. I am an educator in academy. You can follow me in an academy learning app where you can find my other courses as well. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the stresses developed in the helical sprint. So please rate, review and share the video and also subscribe to an academy YouTube channel. Welcome again to stresses in helical springs. Helical spring under axial load. Figure A shows a round by helical compression spring loaded by the axial force F. We designate D as the mean coil diameter and small d as the bar diameter. Isolate a section in the spring as shown in the figure. So see here, here we have a helical compression spring and the dimensions of the helical compression spring are shown in this figure. Here D, small d is the diameter of the spring wire and capital D is the mean coil diameter of the helical spring, right? As you can observe, this spring is under the application of an axial load of magnitude F which is acting through the centroid of the cross section of this axial a helical spring and due to the application of this axial load which is passing through this axis if we cut the portion of this spring as shown in this figure b you can find at the cross section of the spring where you will find two types of loadings are acting they are t equals to ft by 2 which is the torsional load and f which is the shear load right and this if we draw the free body diagram for this part of the helical spring you will find at this cross section you will find two types of loading their magnitude is provided here and this torsion is accounts for the counter torsion for the movement created by the f the axial load so if we draw the free body diagram here this system should be in equilibrium and also the movement created by f should be equals to the the reaction the movement at here and the movement will be t equals to ft by 2 so the value of movement created by f will be the magnitude of product of force and also the distance from the point of determination to the to the line of action of the force right that will be d by 2 where d is the mean coil diameter that's why we have got the value of the torsion created here at the cross section of the spring where will be t equals to ft by 2 so the conclusion of this discussion is at the cross section of the spring where you have found two types of loadings one is shear loading which is directed in opposite direction to the axial load and we have the torsional loading which is which is acting in clockwise di anti clockwise direction and it counters the movement created by the axial load acting on the compression helical spring okay and it is its magnitude is given by t equals to ft by 2 now we are going to see what are the types of stresses and their magnitude developed at this cross section of the spring wire so for equilibrium, the isolated section contains a direct shear force F and a torsion moment T equals to FT by 2. And the maximum shear stress in the wire may be computed by superposition of the direct shear stress with V equals to F and the torsion shear stress. Right? So the value of the stress, the total stress created developed at the cross section of the spring wire will be given by tau maximum equals to TR by J plus F by A where T R by J is the stress created by the, the torsion loading at the cross section of the spring, this one, right? So the magnitude will be T R by J and this relation is obtained for the beams under torsion. So if you want to know how to obtain this relation, you better go through the lectures where which has named by the torsion in beams under torsion, right? So there you will find the process to find this relation, okay? And this lecture is in the course, The Mechanics of Materials, Part 1. Okay. So the maximum stress here is tau maximum equals to R by J plus F by A. And this value, the tau maximum value is obtained, for the, uh, obtained at the inside fiber of the spring. So this cross section is the inside fiber, right? That's why we got the stress given by this relation. Okay. So, so in this relation, you can find to find the value of tau maximum, we need to have some terms in this equation. They are T j f and a right where d is the movement acting the torsion acting at the cross section and j is the polar movement of inertia of the cross section of the spring wire and r is the the radius of the cross section of the spring wire and f is the shear loading acting at the cross section and a is the area of the cross section of the spring wire right so we have to find these terms to determine the value of tau maximum which is the maximum shear stress developed in the cross section of the spring wire right so for this we have tau maximum equals to tau and a equals to pi d square by 4 where a is the cross section of the spring wire right 
that's why we got pi d square by 4 where d is the diameter of the spring wire and r equals to d by 2 and t equals to f t by 2 okay so we, this value is calculated from the discussion and j equals to pi d to the power of 4 by 32 and where j is the polar moment of inertia of the cross section of the spring wire so on substituting these values in this equation for the tau maximum we have got tau equals to 8 f t by pi d cube plus 4 f by pi d square right so we have defined a term called spring index which is given by c equals to d by d where d is the main coil diameter and small d is the, the diameter of the spring where spring index which is a measure of coil curvature so this spring index constant for a helical spring which accounts for the the coil curvature of the spring and this spring index is the dimensional quantity because it is the the ratio of the two uh, lengths or the diameters here okay so on substituting this value this spring index value with the values here given and replacing the value of t by d with the value of c we can get the value of tau equals to ks into 8 ft by pi d cube okay where k is defined as the shear stress correction factor and it is defined by k is equals to 2c plus 1 by 2c okay where c is the spring index so this value tau equals to ks into 8 ft by pi d cube is got from this equation by replacing the value of d and small d with the value of c which is the spring index right so we have got this relation for the the shear stress the total shear stress developed in the the spring wire right that's why we have got this relation so the preferred value of c ranges from 4 to 12 the value of c is depends on the geometry of the spring and it is given by it ranges from 4 to 12 okay which is a dimensionless quantity right that's why we got 4 to 12 without any dimension so we have got the value of the, sh the shear stress the total shear stress developed with the spring wire when the helical spring is under the application of axial load which is passing through the center of the cross section of the helical spring right and the use of square or rectangular wire is not recommended for springs unless space limitations make it necessary springs of special wire shapes are not made in large quantities unlike those of round wires they have not had the benefit of refining development and hence may not be used as strong as the springs made from the round wire so in a in this discussion we have used the helical springs of round wires right so in most of the cases in most of the applications you see only round wires because the Square wires are used less and they have made in very little quantities, right? That's why we have discussed about the helical springs made of round wires only and this stress relation is only for the wires, helical springs which are made from the rounded wires, rounded spring wires, okay? And these, when we can use the square or rectangular wires when we have a limitation for the space of the spring, okay? If we have limitation for the space means we have a little we if we need a little spring which can take a little space in the mission part we have to go for the springs made of other cross sectionals okay like squares rectangular like that okay for most of the applications we have we use only the springs helical springs made from the rounded spring wires okay you might have seen the rounded helical springs in most of the applications in our daily household purposes in every machine elements you use where there is a presence of flexibility you encounter the use of uh, helical springs okay or torsional springs which are the wire springs with which are made from the rounded cross-sectional wires okay thank you